thank you guys. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm excited for the spring semester. Uh, see a lot of familiar faces, see a lot of new faces, so it's really exciting. I'm happy to get into what we do, and uh, that's that's the mission of today. Kind of introduce you guys to the kind of topics we cover. You know, introduce you to venture capital, uh, what we do at Warrington Ventures here in terms of our involvement around campus, um, in the entrepreneurial space, in the VC space, etc. And um, yeah, so first off, I want to introduce you guys to the board. Uh, my name is Vinay Krishnadas. I'm a third year data science major and vice president of Warrington Ventures. I have a background in FinTech, previously worked at MasterCard, currently now working for a mid to early to mid stage SaaS startup called Admiral. Um, and yeah, this is uh, my colleague John. Hi, I'm John. I'm a second year. I'm double majoring in finance and economics, and I'm the co-director of curriculum uh, with Alex. So Alex didn't make it today, and he's getting his master's in IB and real estate. Yeah, and uh, quickly want to familiar. I want you guys to familiarize yourselves with uh, Daniel here. He's our head of advisory. Yep, Daniel here, head of advisory. I'm a uh, second year studying finance. So would you like me to expand upon uh, advisory at all? Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Nice to meet you all. Uh, and then we have Abhishek. Hey everyone, so I'm a third year finance major and I'm also the head of deal sourcing here at Warrington Ventures. So, nice to meet you all. And we have Gia. Hey everyone, <clears throat> I'm Gia. I'm a third year finance major. I'm the director of operations here at Warrington Ventures and I also head the competition committee. So if you're interested in that, you can ask me any questions you have. Jackson. Hey everybody, I'm Jackson. I'm a third year finance student. I am the treasurer here. I work with Avi on the deal sourcing side. Nice to meet you. And uh, superstar marketer, Grant. I'm Grant. I'm the director of marketing for Launch Ventures, and I am a third year economics student. Riley? My name is Riley Barrett. Um, I'm a third year. I'm in the MS ISOM program, and I'm the secretary. Oh, and uh, we're missing, as John mentioned, Alex, our co-director of curriculum, and Daron, the president. He's uh, he'll be joining us in uh, shortly towards the end of the meeting, so you guys will get a chance to meet him then. But just wanted you guys to get a good. Those of you who are new here, you know, put a name to the face uh, of all the people on the board here. We want to be super approachable. You know, we want to be act as you know, quasi mentors. We want to be accessible to you guys. Uh, if you ever want to learn more about the club or what each of our uh, committees are doing, please approach any one of us on the board and be happy to elaborate. Alright, so what is our mission here at Warrington Ventures? So we have two components. We have an educational component and we have an experiential component. So our educational component is dedicated to helping students really dive into private capital markets, whether it be a research role, whether that be getting their hands dirty and do conduct conducting due diligence. Um, we want students to be able to be well versed in private capital markets and apply skills that translate across whether that be banking, whether that be private equity, venture capital, hedge funds. These industries, these niches underneath the umbrella of finance, underneath the umbrella of private capital are really our goal to, we want to expose you guys to these, these branches. And so Private capital markets is our focus and our educational component. That's what we cover in our weekly lectures. We really dive into these topics that really help you become well-versed in these areas if you choose to pursue these niche areas in finance. Um, but also, we have our educational component here at Warrington Ventures. Um, we seek to assist and empower the Gainesville entrepreneurial com community by assisting early stage businesses um, on an ad hoc basis, on a project basis. Um, so we really serve as an intersection between entrepreneurship and finance. And what that means is that kind of goes hand in hand with this realm of venture capital, which is where you know, financial institutions invest capital into early stage startups. So kind of giving you an idea of that whole well-rounded puzzle is we, we plug into the startup community, we assist early stage companies, we conduct dual sourcing, we collaborate with the other side of the arm, the venture capital firms, and we conduct deal sourcing. And we also host co competitions within the area as well um, that brings together startup founders from all over Florida. And we also put together competitions where we draw in judges from the venture capital ecosystem um, all over the Southeast region. So th these give you access to real world professionals and um, on both sides of the coin, on the entrepreneur side 
and on the venture capital side. Um, so those are kind of our two components. And the educational side you'll see at our general body meetings, um, but our field experience side is more tailored to our analyst program, which I'll get into more uh, in depth in a second. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to read you guys our vision statement. Uh, Warrington Ventures, we're a nonprofit, seek to relieve startups with excess casework. We enable students to support these businesses as an active, voluntary extension of the labor force. Our vision is to educate emerging investors to make knowledgeable and strategic investment decisions that will change the world. Basically, what we mean by that is we want you guys to be able to think like an investor. So, if you have a startup in front of you, how can you determine whether this startup is just a passion project that's going nowhere, or if this startup is the next Google? These are the stakes that venture capital inherently raises, and this is why we need to equip students here at UF with the ability to put on that investor cap and be able to identify what is a strong company, what is an early stage success. So, first let's get into our advisory committee in our analyst program. So, we have our partners, UF Innovate, Santa Fe C. These are two local incubators here within Gainesville. UF Innovate is obviously affiliated with UF and the seed incubator is affiliated with Santa Fe. Both of these institutions have a lot of portfolio startups that they help nurture, accelerate, fund, and grow uh, from an early stage level. And so what opportunities do we offer with these collaborations? Well, UF Innovate will fill, uh, UF Innovate will give us, funnel us, their portfolio companies to collaborate on semester-long projects where you will act as an intern with these companies. You'll work closely with founders on these projects under non-disclosure over the course of the semester. And you'll get really in-depth into the nitty-gritty of their business, explore growth potential. It's a great resume builder, build a strong network of founders. You get, you talk to some of our existing analysts, they've gotten the, the chances to you know, venture out to that UF Innovate building. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of or seen the UF Innovate building. Yeah, so it's that big building over by the Swamp Restaurant. Uh, it's a little bit removed from campus, but it's a great, you know, great opportunity here at UF that a lot of students don't really gain access to. Um, I, for one, had no idea that it existed uh, until a year ago. And it's a great opportunity to build a great network of founders coming out of the university. And you get to apply skills, learn in GBMs with these projects with founders, right? We teach you not only these technical, you know, hard skills, but also soft skills. How to speak to a founder. How can you identify in a conversation with a founder whether or not this founder is capable of scaling a business. And when you talk to the established founders that are coming out of UF Innovate, you can tell that they have what it takes to grow companies. And of course, you have exposure to many industries. There are a variety of companies coming out of these incubators that you'll gain a lot of exposure to. And some of our past projects, uh, for example, we had an aerospace company, a defense aerospace company called Mars Aerospace, uh, and a hangover care company called Early Bird. So a lot of variety in the startups that we work with. Um, but yeah, this is our advisory committee, our startup collaboration. <coughs> and Daniel Igulata is the head of this committee. So if you have any questions about this, please approach him or I uh, after this meeting. And here is the contact information. Uh, an interest form is available. If you want to go ahead and scan that now, I'll give you a few seconds. Um, if you want to join this committee, please. But remember that we have a separate application as well. So if you are actually interested and want to apply to this committee, then please refer to our application. It's in our Instagram website. Um, if you have any trouble finding the application, uh, come approach me after the meeting. But that is how you can actively apply to this committee. All right, next we have our competition committee. So our mission is to kind of grow the venture capital ecosystem at UF, and the competitions are the number one way to do that. So for instance, right now, we are currently in the process of hosting BCIC, which is a global venture capital competition. And we are hosting it here at UF for the first time. So we have six schools coming. We got Georgia Tech, Emory, American and three others that I can't really remember right now. They're all coming to UF at the end of February. 
um, to compete in this competition, and it's a huge event that we're putting on. So the competition committee does all the heavy lifting and the logistical work behind the scenes to arrange this competition. Um, so it's a lot of work behind the scenes. You know, we've been at it, and uh, we've got a great panel of judges, um, a great event set up, a great networking session. So if you want to get involved with that competition, it's a great way to uh, boost the, our presence here at UF and our presence nationally as well, um, because we also compete in these competitions. Right now, I'm, the, I'm competing on a team with Avi, Gia, Jackson, and uh, two others in February as well, up in DC, in this competition. It's a great learning experience. I've competed last year in the past. We've gotten third place. This year, we're looking to get first place uh, for the first time here at UF. Um, but yeah, relatively new competitions that UF is is kind of putting their feet in, into them. So um, these are great opportunities for us to grow our brand nationally and uh, become one of the premier venture capital programs in the country. So yeah, once again, a great way to uh, build your resume by joining this committee. Um, you can develop your outreach skills, talk to founders, talk to VCs, right? Organizing this competition means you gotta find participants. And participants in this competition are startups. And judges in this competition are venture capitalists. So you have to speak to both of these people. You have to conduct outreach to them. And you know, it's really, it's really fun putting these projects together. And um, our goal in the future is to host an in-house version of VCIC here at UF, what some of the top schools in the country do. Uh, like Miami of Ohio has a great program. Uh, Harvard, Yale, they host in-house VCIC competitions. So it's a, it's a long-term goal of the competition committee as well. Uh, but if you want to learn more about VCIC and joining, uh, please speak to me after me. And once again, there's an interest form, and Abhishek uh, leads this committee as well. So go to him if you have any questions. But you can apply to this committee on our application. Um, our marketing committee is headed by Grant. Uh, you guys have seen us on Instagram, the screens on Heavener, LinkedIn. We have a website, GroupMe. We even have a YouTube channel where we post all our lectures. So a lot of marketing material, a lot of opportunities to get involved in marketing. And Grant, you know, does a great job, you know, balancing all these different platforms. But you can always use help. So if you're trying to develop your marketing skills, if you're a marketing student, if you're just trying to grow your portfolio of experience and projects, it's a great way to contribute to the club. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of interesting analytics under the hood as well. We have a whole content strategy. We have a, um, we have a posting schedule. You know, it's, it's actually a very well-oiled machine. Um, so yeah, marketing committee is really cool. Uh, we are a relatively new club as well, so we've been active for a year. So everything you've seen is being built from the ground up. So you get to get a great opportunity to come in on the ground floor and, and grow a new brand. Um, once again, we have an interest form for this, which you can apply on the application. And any questions, direct them to Grant or myself. All right. So. Well, we want to, there's a lot going on behind the scenes with Warrington and Ventures in terms of our partnerships, our projects. So we'd like to keep you guys up, up to date on what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, number one, with UF Innovate, we have a meeting scheduled, scheduled next week with the managing director over there uh, to source new projects and get more projects for the advisory program, get feedback on our projects from last semester. And so we'll have some updates for you next week at our meeting on Tuesday uh, after we meet with them on Monday. and then. Additionally, you know, we're a part of the Finance Professional Development Program, which is a program offered to students that lets you explore the different niche areas of finance. You have different sectors of this program. You have the consulting sector, the investment banking sector. So we represent the venture capital sector of the FPE program. And so being a part of that program gives us access to field trips, uh, different events where we can collab with other sectors and meet other students within these areas of finance a great opportunity to build your network um, and also go on some cool trips and we have that in the pipeline and we're also uh, as I mentioned I'm on a competition team we're competing in February so we're, we're doing a lot of like fierce preparation for that right now um, so that's pretty exciting as well hopefully we, would, we bring back uh, first place and also we like to kind of take you through what we've been accomplishing this past semester and what's in the backlog and what we have in progress so you know you see these kind of interesting names uh, of our projects. These refer to our advisory program projects with startups. 
They're all essentially code names because we can't disclose the actual company name that we're working with because it's all under non-disclosure. So that's what Project Horizon, Project Alpha refer to is are these projects with ongoing commitments with UF Innovate and those startups. Um, but we also have Project KVD, which is a project that myself, uh, Daron, and Carl, who's here, uh, we're working on that independently as well. We uh, sprung up an undergraduate venture capital course that we have piloted, and uh, that's a close in close collaboration with Florida Funders, one of our industry partners as well. So super exciting project, and uh, I was trying to sort of growing that from the ground up as well with the deal sourcing end. And um, yeah, we have our meeting with UF Innovate next week to have new inbound projects. Um, small business case competition. We had a pitch competition last semester. Definitely trying to spring something up similar this, this semester with the competition committee. Now on to our current event. So we're looking at Floral VC. So it's a VC firm out of London. They just finished their second round of funding. So it's their second time raising money from LPs to go then invest in startups. So they raised 400 million, which is almost 60% larger than the last 250 million that they raised in 2018, or 2022, so 18 months ago. Um, and then, so the 20 largest funds in Europe raised about $12.8 billion and occupy almost three quarters of all of the money raised for VCs within Europe out of 100 plus funds that are located over there. Um, and during 2023, there was the lowest VC investment in Europe in the last decade. So what type of companies do you think that Floral would be investing in for them to be able to raise so much money now, coming out of a year where there was the least amount of investment in the VCs and the least amount of money like promised to them for them to invest into startups? So what type of companies or industries would they be investing in? Like where would their portfolio be made? Any ideas? I'll probably just say AI. It's one of them. That's the main say, one. Yeah. I was going to say tech or AI. So it's... I was going to say defense. So defense, probably yes, but no, they don't do defense. They're more on the tech side. So with AI, I know defense is, especially in the US, one of the largest markets for VCs right now. Um, but they're also looking at tech and climate. So in Europe, they're trying to be a lot more climate friendly. Um, so they're investing into a lot of those tech and climate companies, just looking to change the world in that way. And then with the 60% increase in 18 months and the amount of money that they raised, that's also, that kind of astounds me as well. Um, what do you think they did in their past round of fundraising and what they were able to do with that fund to allow them to raise 60% more money this time around? Differentiate themselves from previous funds, explain how what they're funding for is different than the past, and that's why they should have more money. Maybe convince other people to invest more. Yeah. Any other ideas? Maybe their earnings are good, or like they show themselves and prove themselves. Maybe. Yeah. So both. Right. And then the other kind of interesting thing that wouldn't be known from just this slide is it's all um, founders themselves that went and started this VC. So they have a lot of the networking connections and they were able to prove that in the first round that they were able to get a high return on the money that they had invested into the fund for their LPs and the people that had invested into them. So that's why they're able to raise so much the second time. Just to clarify, for those of you that are new, every week we start our meetings with a current event discussion, kind of gets you in the mindset of what's going on in the real world right now, the venture capital landscape, always cute, Always really cool deals going on, um, really big news happening in space, so try to keep you guys up to date. Um, and then if you have any questions, I get all of these current events from PitchBook, and a lot of VCs get a lot of their news and their analytics from PitchBook as well. Um, I can help anybody get there if they need to. You have to be on UF Wi-Fi, but there's a VPN that you can download that allows you to get access to it either way, through UF. So I think another really cool current event that's going on is Reddit's seeking to launch their IPO in March, so that's also pretty relevant to the VC market at all. One of the most successful exits for a startup is the IPO, and uh, Reddit, they're looking to IPO in March, and I'm sure all of us have heard of this. So. Yeah, and if you guys have any cool current events that you, you know, want us to talk about as a group, like, we're, we're open to hearing that. That's a, that's a really cool one, and you know, maybe we'll look into it next week.
right, so the curriculum for these meetings come from these books, um, which come from professionals as well as um, vouched by professors, and you can see them up here. If you'd like to get any of these books and do a deeper dive, you'd be well, you're welcome to email me or message me on GroupMe, and I'll send you these links to those books on Amazon or however you'd like to look at them. So this is our plan for right now for what we're going to go through this semester. So today we're going to be going over venture investment analysis. Um, next week we do startup analysis presentations. So just using what you're learning today to then analyze a startup and give your reasoning for why you think you should or should not invest into it. Then we go into startup venture strategy. Um, so the strategies and the different funds and why they have those strategies. Um, and then we'd also go over the Fed and how interest rates really affect just the cost of money in the future. Um, and then we do VC Shark Tank. So that's where there's a group of people that are kind of acting as the sharks and then you have other groups that are looking to make their own companies. Um, who knows, could spur into a real startup, that'd be really cool. Um, then we do business case analysis. So it's kind of going on to help whenever you're going to help one of those startups in the Gainesville area. This is kind of trying to help you get there and be able to be more of a value add for those companies. And then have an activity with it so you can apply that learning after then as well. Then we look at the valuations for companies, um, just more of the private equity side of Warrington Ventures. Do an activity with it the next day. Um, we had an amazing speaker panel in the fall, and we were hoping to continue that in the spring. Um, we have to figure out who we're getting on the speaker panel, but it should be amazing as it was in the fall. I learned a lot, um, and there was a lot of great things that came out of that. And then we have the portfolio management investment thesis, so just looking at how VCs and private equity companies look at the companies that they have invested in and how they manage those companies and help them grow in the future. And then the investment thesis activity, just again, kind of a follow-up so you can practice and apply your learning from the previous week. All right, yeah, so just a brief introduction to venture capital and some of these terms that we talk about in the club. For instance, you know, we have a deal sourcing committee. Well, what is deal sourcing? So we kind of get into that and, and give you a good overview of, you know, what these terms mean in the overall venture capital landscape and how we at Warrington Ventures emulate these concepts. So first, what is venture capital? Well, venture capital is a ca category of private equity which funds, invest, and startups have long-term high growth potential. It's a competitive form of financing that startups use at various stages uh, at the initial growth of their company. And the key terms with venture capital, you have a term sheet, runway, dilution, convertible notes, shares, vesting. What do these terms mean? We'll get into those, but essentially these are key terms in the venture capital space that come up when you talk about investing. Specifically with today's lecture. Yep. All right, so going over what we went last semester, Um, but do you all have any clue on the general fund structure, so where money comes from into a VC and how it gets to a startup? Uh, we went over quite a bit last semester when we talked about private equity companies as well as venture capital companies. Any ideas? The limited partners? Yeah, so the limited partners, and then who do they give their money to? Give it to the general partners, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the general partner being the VC or the private equity company, which then will invest into the startup. So you kind of get a little graphic here so you can see just the limited partners investing in a venture capital fund and that venture capital fund using their investment thesis to find companies that fit that investment thesis and then investing into them. So today we're gonna to be looking more at how the fund strategy and investments connect. So the fund strategy is the general overlay that a company is gonna lay out um, just kind of their way of differentiating themselves from other VC firms and the way they're going to invest, um, how much money they're going to be giving, the round of funding they're going to be giving it to, the size of the company, um, whatever industry the company's in, and then that will determine the investments um, that are in there as well that they decide to add to their portfolio. All right, now getting into the idea of deal sourcing, demystifying this concept. 
All right, so deal sourcing is the process by which VCs identify and uncover potential investment opportunities. What that means is this is where VCs will scout the entire array and sea of startups that are out there to find the ones that they want to put capital into. So this selection process starts extremely broad. Right? There are hundreds of thousands, of stuff, if not millions of startups out there that are seeking funding. Right? So you start with this wide array and then you apply that term that John just mentioned, your fund strategy, your investment thesis. That is what you use to chisel down this pool of, this pool of companies from 3,000 to 550 to 320 to 40 to 20 to 15 in hopes that you find one that returns your entire fund, that gives you that 10x return. In venture capital, you're not dealing with, you're not trying to get $3 for every dollar you put in. It's not a 3x, it's not a 5x. You're looking for a 10x return on your investment. And so with that, you know, you're gonna have to fire a lot of shots at companies to, in hopes of getting that 10x return. It's a very, it's a high risk, high reward game and that's what you see emulated with this flow chart here. You gotta filter down from that high number to a low number and that's exactly what we do in the deal sourcing committee. We start by vetting thousands of companies and we talk as a group, apply our investment criteria to try to narrow them down into the ones that we really believe are the winners or the ones that can take this capital and scale into a 10x return. So this is the typical overlay for a VC. So they start with the sourcing side, which we'll get into later. But they're either approaching a company or a company is approaching them looking for funding. And then the deal screen, it's just an initial screening to see if they half match the investment thesis. And if they do, then a person from that company and from the startup is chosen to be a representative and really talk and communicate with that VC. And then they'll go into a partner review where the partners of the VC will talk to this person that's working with the company and determine if they think that it could go through due diligence. Due diligence is an expensive process. Some VCs outsource to consulting firms. So really to put in this money and time into doing the due diligence, it has to pass the partner review, which very few companies do. And then past due diligence, it'll go to an investment committee. So it's experts in the industry, the partners, as well as anyone else the VC thinks would be beneficial to determining if the company will be successful and if it fits their investment thesis. And then they'll deploy the capital if they pass all of these tests. So deal sourcing has many forms, right? You have your independent deal sourcing where you're surfing <coughs> these private company databases such as PitchBook, Crunchbase, AngelList. You're sourcing thousands of companies on these databases and you're filtering through through all of them and you're looking into them to see which ones pique your interest, that meet your criteria to the T. So that falls under the category of proactive deal hunting. And that is exactly what we do here at Warrington Ventures in the deal sourcing committee, is we do proactive deal hunting, where we utilize the online platforms, we go through and we narrow down from there. But in industry, that is not the only way that deal sourcing is conducted. You see a lot of VCs leveraging their networks to get the best deals on the table. Basically what that means is, you know, a VC will invest in a founder, and a founder will have a lot of success, and then that VC will ask that founder if anyone within their network is starting a new company. And then that's how they get that initial diligence rolling. It's actually a very popular strategy because this founder business, you know, VCs like to stick with the winners. So you hear this term second time founders, it's a high, it's a highly important term because second time founders have a much higher rate of success than first time founders. If a, second time, if a founder has already exited a company successfully and they're starting a new startup, the chances of that new startup becoming successful are a lot higher than someone who's starting out for the first time. So that's where VCs will leverage their networks to find those second time founders. Maybe someone they've invested in in the past is launching a new startup. Maybe someone they know that's already exited launching a new startup. So, it's a very common practice actually in venture capital once you get to the higher levels. But this form of deal sourcing, the proactive deal hunting, that's what you do if you're an analyst at a venture capital firm. So we emulate that task, that role. Um, if you're an analyst, if I were to walk in and start working in an entry level role, you know, this is what I would be doing. I'd be doing the proactive deal hunting, the search and screen. Another one that's interesting to bring up is tech-based sourcing. So in a constantly evolving world, you, you have this these concepts of machine learning, AI, how is venture capital adapting to these emerging technologies? Well, it's interesting because venture capital is 
inherently qualitative, right? You're trying to understand from you know, a founder's pitch deck or a founder presentation whether or not a company is going to skyrocket or it's going to plummet. So how do you embed you know, data analytics, proprietary AI or machine learning into that? It's a very interesting concept. It's actually something that I've explored in some of my you know, data science classes and, and trying to incorporate machine learning into venture capital. You know, how can you automate some of these processes and increase your, your very thin margins of success? And uh, yeah. these are all different forms of deal sourcing. The tech-based one, very interesting. Uh, maybe we'll have a case study on that later on this semester. So these are some ways that name brands for VCs, how they increase their brand name, and they hope that more VC or more startups will come to them, more founders will come to them and be looking for funding from them specifically. Um, as Vinay mentioned, it's a very competitive space. A lot of VCs are going after the top companies. So you have to have the reputation that you're able to help them in whatever ways you can, your networks, you're able to leverage and really help them expand their companies. So Backstage Capital has the Bootstrap VC. It's a podcast. Um, it's kind of blown up more than out of the VC space. A lot of people listen to it, and they never know. Maybe there's some founder that's listening and decides that they want to invest with the, or put their company in their hands because of what they hear on the podcast. Uh, Andrew Chin works for one of the biggest VCs in the nation out of Silicon Valley, and he has a weekly newsletter. And then kind of the same thing as the podcast, just kind of increasing your awareness in the founder space. And then you have AngelList, and AngelList is kind of like a dating site for investors and startups. So it connects them, and it connects them based on that investment thesis that the investors have and whatever they're looking for to invest in. Right. Now we'll be going up over due diligence and evaluating startups. So essentially when venture capitalists are getting into the nitty gritty of a startup, you know, they look at a lot of different technical things about this startup. You look at, you know, unit economics such as, you know, your cost per, uh, your, your customer acquisition cost, your lifetime value, but you're also looking at macroeconomic terms like total addressable market. And so these are some of the due diligence checklist items that venture capitalists are looking for. And a startup has to take every single one of these boxes to the T for, the, for it to move forward in the diligence process. So you have these terms, the team is extremely important, product market fit, scalability, you know, you want to see your investment return on a 10x scale, so the idea itself has to be very scalable. So that's where you're looking at the difference between like making 18 mailers and developing a software that you can mass reproduce. Exactly, something like that. And then that goes into like the cost structure, you know, how much does a product cost? You know, is there a product market fit? Are people buying what you're selling in today's environment? Does the timing check out? You know, is this company you know growing on the right trajectory? And are you hitting the are you hitting this investment at the right point in the curve? So the timing is key because there's so many companies that you know, you're looking at exponential growth here. If you miss the curve, you might come on the latter end, and then your window is gone to really achieve that 10x investment. So the timing is key. A lot of qualitative things like the team is very important. So they look at a lot of different things basically and um, you know, we'll, we'll get into this and we have a handout as well that uh, you guys can refer to after this presentation. But the point is, is that you know, when you're conducting due diligence, you're not just looking at you know, these you know, metrics within the company, you're also looking at, from the, you're taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture of the macroeconomic trends and the team, the economic environment, um, and basically, how is this all going to translate into your investment? So in the middle here, we have Ulu, the VC Ulu, and they're looking at investing into SoFi. And the three th main things they were looking for was the large market opportunity, the compelling team, and the strategic fit. And then they have some more bullet points in there. Um, and then you can look back at those if you ever decide to go look at YouTube and really dig into them. But this is how they were criteriaizing them with their due diligence on SoFi. Then, with their due diligence and Ulu Ventures, they were looking at these six steps whenever they in look at to investing in a company, and these are the six steps they do in their due diligence. So, like Vinay was saying, a lot of the things that a VC is looking for is qualitative, so it's hard to really put a number on it and assess that risk. 
but they do this in step three, but first they create a market map. So they're looking at the total available market, the competitors, the market share that they have, and the market share that they believe they're able to work towards in the future. Um, after they assess the risks, they quantify the uncertainties and the probabilities that different things will happen. Um, they'll be looking at their revenues and their profits and their availability to grow if they have these certain risks that come through. Um, using the probabilities in their own statistical software, they can then perform a sensitivity analysis and calculate the risk return. And based on that, they'll determine if they're due diligence, through their due diligence, if the company is worth investing into or not. All right, so this is, you know, this is a lot of content, but essentially this is an example of a checklist that a venture capitalist goes through. So basically how VCs interact with founders is, you know, they'll have a diligence call, they'll have a meeting where they're, the founder is presenting their company in hopes of re receiving funding. And the venture capitalist is sitting there across from the table and they have something like this. And either it's a tangible kind of checklist or it's something in their mind that they're keeping in mind, basically. So a lot of specific factors are here on this slide and we have this exact um, graphic, I believe, on the one pager handout as well. But it's an example of basically the systematic process by which a venture capitalist will evaluate a startup when they're undergoing that initial due diligence call. So that's what you see here is a due diligence checklist and um, Different aspects, of course, commercial, technical, financial, and legal. They look to cover all bases before they even move to step number two. So like I was saying, this is one of those consulting firms that a VC will hire to do their due diligence, and this is the checklist that they make and they produce, and that's where we took it from. So now, deal structuring and how VCs actually make these deals uh, with the term sheet, the agreement between Start up. So we'll start with the money. And so this is the pre money and the post money valuation before VC puts in money. So they'd be investing Series A, $2 million. And before the company was valued at $7 million. And then afterwards it'd be valued at nine, as you can see over there on the far right. Um, originally there was the million dollars of shares. And then now they're adding in another 285000 um, same share price, so the value of that equity doesn't go down, but you lose the percentage of control that you have within the company. So you still have the same amount of money invested, but you deal with dilution, and this is where you're slowly losing your control of the company. So the existing investors were originally 100% of the company in terms of equity, and now they're only at 78% of the equity in the company. So there's control mechanisms to deal with this. Um, such as venting as well as um, the convertible notes. So convertible notes are wherever you give somebody a loan and then as instead of paying you back in terms of money, you'll slowly receive equity for that um, loan amount. And then you have vesting, which is where your equity slowly grows over time. So that could be for a founder or for an employee. It's like in a company, if you're working for a company and you get stock options as your bonus, you believe the company is going to grow, so you think that holding on to those stock options, you'll eventually get more money from that than the bonus would be regularly. So that's kind of the idea of vesting and those control mechanisms to deal with dilution, um, because it comes naturally as a company is raising more money throughout the different series. So quickly, you know, you see a lot of numbers here on the screen. You know, it's a it's a complete financial breakdown of the valuation and investment and. Basically, when a VC finds a startup and you know that marriage is perfect and they're ready to move forward and deploy capital, this is the structure by which that capital is deployed. So you know there's a fundamental equation in VC: pre-money valuation plus investment equals post-money valuation. So that's what you see here: pre-money seven million <coughs> plus a two million dollar investment equals a nine million dollar post-money valuation. So it's a simple equation, but I want to kind of raise and uh, raise an idea around this term of dilution. So in venture capital, you know, back to that first slide in the definition, that word competitive. So dilution is key. How many of you guys have seen that movie, The Social Network? I think I brought this up last uh, semester. But, right, so in this movie, there's that famous scene 
of Andrew Garfield, and he's freaking out because basically his shares got completely diluted to like 0.001%. And the movie is based around Facebook, so shares are worth like tens of millions of dollars. And he got diluted to next to nothing. So that's kind of the stakes that are being played at here, is your shares as an investor, think about it. If I invest $5 in a company worth $10 today, you know, my investment is huge. It means the world to that company. But if that company then grows to be worth $10 million and all of a sudden these institutional investors come in and they invest hundreds of thousands of dollars, well, their hundreds of thousands of dollars compared to my $5, how does that work? Because timing and valuation, everything is changing. So whose shares are getting diluted? Whose shares count more, right? There are a lot of nuances to VCs that will separate you from being, you know, the Andrew Garfield of the situation where you're freaking out because you got diluted to 0.001%, or you know you know what you're doing and you've gone into the nuances and you've secured your preferred class of shares, and you know your shares grow with the company, and you turn out on top. You know your equity doesn't get diluted to nothing. So that's what we mean by control mechanisms and dilution. You know you got to account for every single occurrence of a company, whether it skyrockets or plummets. You got to be protected. So. That's why you know we get into these kind of financial minutia, but at the end of the day, it's it's pretty high stakes, and um, yeah, that's kind of uh, the the groundwork for the term sheet is to it's a legally non-binding document that establishes all the terms before the investment. So both the VC and the entrepreneur are both on the same page in terms of what they're getting into. So you have a lot of provisions that account for you know if the company gets acquired or if the company you know liquidates. Or you know what happens if a founder leaves, or you know if a VC wants to take a board seat, they can claim a right to the board seat. So that's a control provision. So it's a kind of a back and forth. You know, founders will often push back on a lot of these provisions because they don't want to give away a lot of control, a lot of equity in their startup. But at the end of the day, their startup needs money, so that's where the VC comes in and they they pull their weight with their investment, and you'll see it all spill out onto this term sheet. And it's, genuinely just a one-page document and it's non-binding but here's an example of one and you'll see kind of lay out the groundwork for the investment and what happens in a lot of different scenarios um, and so yeah I have another quick question because I was just thinking about you know movies and how to relate to movies um, have you guys how many of you guys have seen that uh, there's a documentary on Netflix or not a documentary but some sort of show about the founding of Uber have you seen that? I know Grant's seen it. But basically, there's this show on Netflix, and it, it goes through the founding of Uber when it was a startup. And one of the first investors in Uber was a venture capitalist by the name of Bill Gurley. He's in that TV show. And this guy, Bill Gurley, is actually an alumni of UF, one of the first investors in Uber. So a huge VC, because as you know, Uber blew up. Um, so one of the most notable alumni of UF, and a potential guest speaker that I'm trying to get in the door here. So yeah, you can see a lot of these things, you know, it seems like a lot of minutia, but it plays out in real life with the Ubers of the world, the Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world. You know, these things determine who comes out on top when these companies skyrocket. So yeah, that's what I want to leave you guys with. Uh, hopefully it didn't get too much content. Just wanted to sort of put these terms out there, put this information out there, see if you know it resonates with you. And um, if you have any questions about some of the committees and the other things we do here. We do have pizza. Um, apologize if I've been speaking too long. It's been getting, a little, been getting a little cold in the back there, so please hurry up and grab some pizza before it gets cold. Um, but yeah, that's everything.